Hi, this is model shipwright Steve Prisky with another short video about one of my favorite tall ship models I've been commissioned to build. This one, the three-masted lumber schooner Advance, circa 1902. The Advance was built on the Coquille River in southern Oregon, home port to the city of Bandon, Oregon. The ship was about 150 feet from tip of the bowsprit to the tip of the spanker boom and carried coal in the hold and lumber on her deck. I was commissioned to build this model by a University of Oregon professor. The Coquille River is about halfway between San Francisco and Seattle, just south of Coos Bay, Oregon. Once you make it across the dangerous sandbar entrance, you are right away at the city of Bandon, Oregon. Today a very popular tourist destination and home to huge cranberry bogs. Right away at the entrance of the Coquille River is the Coquille River Lighthouse seen here on the left in this image. Middle of the photo is a luxury home just on the beach. It's no longer there. But to the right, notice the big rocks on the beach. They and the lighthouse are important to this story. Here's the Coquille River Lighthouse today, looking exactly the same as it did in the late 1800s. Now, just as we pass the lighthouse and enter the river, we come to a lumber yard where the dock is stacked a dozen feet high with board lumber ready for shipment. Oregon skippers were infamous for loading their decks so high with lumber it would be 10 to 15 feet above the main deck. I've even found vintage newspaper accounts of sailors jumping ship at the last minute when they saw how high the decks were being loaded. In fact, the belaying pin racks were totally obscured by the stacked lumber and had to be moved into the shrouds something you'll see later in the model. These next two images are courtesy of the Coquille River Museum, where we see the schooner advance dockside, lowering her sails. And then in this postcard image of the advance, leaving Bandon for San Francisco, with the Coquille River lighthouse in the background, and the ship's deck is fully loaded with lumber. But it didn't always work out that way. Pretty much every river harbor along the U.S. West Coast had huge sandbars. Ships had to try to cross, and many being lost in the attempt. Here's the schooner advance, caught up by the river sandbar around 1905, washed up on the beach in front of the Coquille River Lighthouse. Normally, this would spell the end, but that tight hawser we see on the right was connected to a tugboat that managed to pull the advance off the beach with the next high tide, saving the ship. Here we see her limping back into Bandon, having escaped where few do. In fact, noticing the enormous beach rocks on the right, we next meet the Advance's twin sister, the three-masted schooner Onward, built in 1901, but fatefully ending her life on this Oregon beach. While this is certainly a tragic fate, it gives us model builders great images to study so we know exactly how these ships were built and rigged. Look at those incredibly fine lines of this three-masted coastal schooner. Now here's a look at my model of the schooner Advance, circa 1902. The model was not to be painted but built of exotic woods, so the hull, which is double plank on bulkhead constructed, had teak wood for the outer layer. I laid in a beechwood strake for the waterline. The deck planks have real rope caulking between each of them, just like on the real ship. And there's this really cool decorative and functional twin bumper along the side of the ship, which I had fun replicating. Next comes the dead eye installation. A few holes lightly drilled and then nailed into place. I used Danish teak oil to coat the ship model. Now comes the mast construction, for which I found these laser cut mast hoops, something I couldn't have done from scratch. And once the jaws for the booms were fashioned and perils added, I threaded the hoops and added furled sails, as called for in the commission. Next is mounting the ship's rudder. 
where after tapping the nail holes, I attached the gungeons and pintles, and here's the final look. And now the most fun part of building ships of sail, the rigging. Here I'm stringing the shrouds, backstays and ratlins. As mentioned before, the fate of some of these ships is unfortunate, but photographs like this one sure gives us a chance to study exactly how these ships were rigged. Most of the ship's fittings are made from bronze, brass, or cast metal, and a few deck fittings were fashioned from wood. Then one of the last things to construct was the ship's boat, also a plank on frame affair. But the deck was waiting to be occupied by towering loads of lumber, so the boat just sits on the deck for now. And here, one of my favorite parts, selecting a base for the model, which is Oregon Myrtle Wood. This piece chosen as it evokes the movement of water. There is a large hole in the middle of the base which when displayed over a mirror will reflect interesting views of the model you might not otherwise see. It was great fun to photograph the finished model of the schooner Advance at the San Francisco Golden Gate, right where the wheel ship sailed in and out of dozens if not hundreds of times. Thank you for watching How I Built the Three-Masted Lumber Schooner Advance, circa 1902. This is model shipwright Steve Prisky, signing off. Actually, there's a short PS to this story. Following the delivery of the primary model to the owner, a professor up at the University of Oregon, he commissioned me to build five small miniature models of the Schooner Advance for, other, for family members. So here you can see the construction of some of those. I think they came out pretty cool.